Howdy, my fellow wood gas bug bite victims. You're looking at my latest little creation. It's a nine foot long, thereabouts, trolley to carry the wood gasifier created by Ben Peterson some time ago. The stainless steel work of art is carried along on four wheels supported by a galvanized tube section trolley that I've been building in recent weeks. Initially it had straight rails that ran the full length of the trolley but I couldn't quite fit them in with the steering arrangement. And as you can see those wheels tend to encroach upon the line taken by the imaginary um, or original uh, chassis arrangement. So I've dog-legged them in on each side in order to narrow the frame where the engine will eventually be mounted. This high-tech steering system is sort of like you might find in a go-kart. So the yoke that pulls things along essentially dictates the way the wheels are pointing. That's all pretty straightforward. Now looking along here, we have us a mild steel frame to which the stainless steel gasifier has been bolted. I'm still deliberating at the moment as to how I'm going to attach that mild steel frame to the chassis of the trolley. I'm thinking perhaps a combination of L brackets and judicious welding uh, will, will allow me to sort of bolt it in place. That way I could remove it in its entirety should the need arise. So we have this suspended mount arrangement here below the chassis of the trolley as low as I can get it in order to make the gasifier frame which is rather tall that bit more accessible. If you're scared of heights of course it's a good thing right? because uh, that's a long way up. And the air up there is pretty thin and Sherpas charge a fortune to uh, escort me up to the top of Mount Gassimore. That uh, suspended arrangement is repeated here too. So you've got the rear wheels joined together at the back by a cross member that runs under the gasifier frame. What that allows me to do is set foot at about this location and climb up and gain access to the gasifier door. So let's do that. Got oxygen here so I can actually breathe because it's so high up. And let's have a look see down inside here. We have our noodles down there. <coughs> our elevated you know, reduction zone and the pit below it which connects down to our grate. If I rotate the grate lever, which I'll show you a bit later, you can probably see the grate rotating. It's a giant turntable sort of thing down there with a grate that's a dish around about one and a half inches deep. You can also see a cone there which directs the treasel down towards the noodles and its final fate. Hot stuff. Looking a bit closer, you can see a set of holes here between the inner and outer skins of the gasifier uh, hopper. And it's an interesting little arrangement. I think it's actually working as a sort of moderator so as to extract as much moisture as possible from the fuel as it breaks down inside here. That ends up coming out of here. The drain port is attached here. This will get screwed onto it. And that juice runs down here for collection. We have us a little valve here that lets gas out but not back in. And this flask eventually fills up with delicious wood wine, which uh, if you add a little bit of sugar to it, maybe beat up a couple of eggs and chuck it in, you got you a decent feed right there. <laughs> depending upon how long you want to live as a result. 
There are a few features on the gasifier that I'm not familiar with, but I'll work my way through those over time. Here's the grate mover. Unfortunately, it hits the reservoir for the primary cyclone, but there's enough movement still to use it to clear out the bottom of the grate. No problem there, I suspect. Maybe a couple of mods here and there might improve things. And uh, talking cleaning the grate out, we've got this access port here. So you can undo that, reach in with your wife's vacuum cleaner and destroy it in the process of clearing the gasifier. <laughs> she won't mind. Um, we've got little things here. That, that might be an ignition port. It seems sensible to assume that it is. And I'm thinking that it lines up with one of the jets. Just check that theory, eh? Back up to Mount Gassimore. Yeah. It does kind of line up with that nozzle right there. So it's not unreasonable to suggest that that's the ignitement port. Uh, I don't know what that is. Um, it could be an ejector port, maybe, for starting the gasifier. I don't know. Um, there are a few other things that are obvious, like the air intake with its little check valve. I don't often see those on gasifiers. Whether it improves a gasifier, I don't know. And then going on a bit further, we have our primary cyclone and its collection tank that you can unscrew and tip out the juices onto the neighbour's garden and watch his roses explode. The cooling tower with what I'm assuming is a vacuum test port so you can check vacuum loss in the system. That connects with this chamber here which I'm assuming is simply a gas plenum which then connects with this which may be a filter tower. I don't know what's in there, what's meant to be in there. Um, it, this machine didn't it come with instructions and uh, so I need to find out the hard way. <laughs> it has a removable top so I can look inside and we have what might very well be another vacuum test port here so you can have manometers on there to check this that and the other thing and possibly the same here. Very good for fault finding. Interesting arrangement here we've got the uh, cyclone sort of device that we're so familiar with that it's connected with an inverted one. I don't know whether that inverted one performs the function. Maybe it does, I don't know. But that appears to dump its load into this box, which doesn't appear to be gas-wise connected to that one, if that makes sense. It has a drain port, so presumably I'll be extracting condensate from there. And we have two more drain ports, or something like it, down here. The bottom one's obviously a drain port, and the top one might be a vacuum test port. I don't know. And uh, I'm assuming that's a drain port there. It seems sensible, considering its location. So that's the gasifier, generally. Um, we have our output column here, an output port there with what might very well be another vacuum test port. I'm only guessing about that. But um, I get the feeling I'm supposed to put filter materials in there and maybe something in there too. I don't know for sure. But the kind of thing I've got in mind is to use this space here to install some filter tubes, uh, some upright filter tubes like we're all familiar with, um, with the gas suppliers created by uh, Flash 001 USA and company. I figured that's what I'll do. Down here somewhere I'll have a car battery to feed power to a blower and so on to get this little puppy started. Now, back to the front, or front to the back. Back to front, oh you know what I mean. Bacteria to the future. I need to put me an engine of some sort there. And I done took me a look around and I found this little fella. I'm thinking the gas supply ought to be strong enough to power this. Three 
1.5 horsepower monster engine should be just powerful enough to push it along. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Um, this little puppy here is uh, my victim. I mean, um, the recipient that I'm planning to put on the trolley. This I stole from the company car. And oh boy, when the boss finds out what I've done, he is going to be miffed. Turns out that I'm the boss. Oh well. Anyway, no, this actually came out of my old Mazda, 1993 Mazda 626 motor car. Um, that little puppy there runs quite nicely, as is. A little bit of work here and there just to bring it up to scratch. Then I'm going to lift it up on my back. Yeah, dream on. And chuck it right here. So, a set of engine mounts that will make up. And then I'll connect them to these cross members here. Uh, this front cross member will carry the radiator and also serve as the front bumper to protect the steering wheels and so on uh, if I'm going too fast. And of course we have the uh, rear cross member that supports the dog leg on the frame of the uh, trolley and of course the middle one which will simply support the mid weight of the engine. Um, instead of rubber mounts for this little puppy, I'll go with solid mounts and uh, that way the vibration from the engine will hopefully translate uh, back to the gas supplier to serve as a shaker maker 9000. That's the theory Mr. McLeary. Uh, when it comes to things like the muffler and stuff like that, it will be a bit like on an ordinary car where the muffler system runs down the side of the uh, the, um, the chassis of the trolley, works its way down to the rear perhaps, and comes out the back or something like that, or maybe points down. But the goal really is to make for a quiet running system, as I hate noisy cars, noisy engines. I want this thing to run nice and quiet like, so it's friendly on the ear as it is on the environment. So, <clears throat> I've got a few parts of muffler here left over from the car. So I've got that flexible union, the uh, first resonator, and in my other workshop I've got me some truck mufflers and uh, tractor parts and things like that. But I think I can combine in a productive sort of way. And maybe, just maybe, if there's room enough, I'll have me a fuel dryer on here too. But you could imagine with a gasifier this jolly big by Joves, you'd need you a big fuel dryer. And then the last thing is some sort of control panel. Where would it go? I don't really know, but somewhere along here feels about right. So upright maybe, attached to the uh, chassis rail, comes up to some sort of control panel along here. Somewhere where it doesn't interfere with these parts here, yet allows me to manage the engine. I'll sort of make it up as I go, sort of like the best plans are. <laughs> Talking of things that are made up, I do wonder about this. Everything else in Ben Peterson's creation has a means of bolting it down. You've got your little feet there that are bolted. But this doesn't have anything, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to deal with that. Um, Maybe some oil thread or something, and a cross piece made from plastic to push it down, sort of like on a car battery. I'll make it up as I go, and uh, create something that works. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, this is one heck of a project, I must admit, and it will produce prodigious amounts of energy, far more than I can hope to actually use. So I need to work my way through that possible issue as well. And uh, talking of issues, one little one remains. And that is a point of weakness right about here and there. You could imagine that wanting to snap under the load of the engine and all the other things on there, weighing it down. So I'm thinking of putting a diagonal brace between there and some point on here in order to support the two. That way it will transmit the load 
back to the rear of the frame through this subframe that carries the gasifier. That's the theory, Mr. McLeary. And I think perhaps the last item on the list, though this thing is easy enough to push around right now on its wheels, um, we're on a hard, smooth floor here. Um, take it outside and try to push it around in the winter time and you're out of luck. It ain't moving. So I'm thinking maybe some little electricity motors somehow done up to the rear wheels. So one driving that somehow, maybe a chain sprocket, and another one. So they're independent, that way you've got an, a differential arrangement integrated with the, with the concept. That way, uh, when you are pushing and pulling this thing with a handle attached to that, sort of like I've got on my generator here, handle, steering, allows me to push and pull this quite easily. That's my welding plant that I use to build, well, everything. Indeed, I used it to build all of this. This is my workshop that I built using a shipping container, a 20-footer, as the central element. Anyway, back to this. Um, I'm thinking the uh, steering handle will have some push buttons and a dial on it. So... When you try to move this, if it won't be pulled, you can simply push the button and the electricity motors will assist maybe pushing this thing along at one or two miles an hour or something like that. It's, uh, you probably don't want to go too fast or else you need to do up your seat belts. And, yeah. and driving this while drunk, mm, not a good idea. Anyway, before the um, ramble gets out of control, the wood gas bug venom is circulating in my veins after all. Uh, I figure I'll uh, get ready to sign off and wish you all a uh, happy new year and uh, ciao for now my fellow wood gas bug bite neck nip victims. Ciao.